All right, guys. Hey, we are here in Gilbert, Arizona. I'm Jason with Fat Fender Garage, and we just finished up this 1978 F350 Ranger XLT, which basically means big boy. So, one ton, long wheelbase, crew cab. I mean, this thing was made to actually do some work out on the farm back in 1978. And so, uh, which quite honestly, it uh, kind of ties in with the company's logo the, uh, that uh, had us build it. Uh, down in Roll, Arizona. I live in Arizona my entire life and I don't even know where that is. Uh, I, I know it's down south by the border. But anyway, so someday I might go down and check it out. But a super cool client uh, just finishing up uh, a restoration on this. When he brought this by, it was in pretty rough shape. He said, let's fix it up, restore it, put a coyote motor in it. So all that's been done, we'll show it to you. And initially I was like, a coyote motor, this thing's so huge. Like it's gonna feel really slow and small. And um, I was mistaken. So the coyote motor actually does move this, not super impressively where it's like a half ton pickup truck, but it actually gets up and goes. And I'm pretty proud of uh, what the coyote motor can do even in a big boy truck like this. So this is pretty much an original paint scheme with the black top, the black stripe here, the moldings top and bottom red and black, you might have seen that. Very cool paint scheme. And really try to keep this thing as traditional looking as we could with a few modifications. Uh, the interior is a little bit upgraded. You don't have uh, that nasty plaid looking interior, which you would have had. So we try to keep it a little bit more modern just with the truck being a little bit more modern. So we got the aluminum uh, Alco dually wheels on here and uh, dually in the back. And this actually from the factory was only a dually in the rear. So it actually didn't have a dually wheel up front. So we actually had to come up with the dimensions of the big spacer we were gonna to need to add onto it in order to create this look because it would have had just a traditional offset uh, wheel in the front. So we've completely gone through this thing, front, back, brakes, seals, everything. Um, it is lowered about three inches over factory height, um, but it still will be able to perform and do the work. We've got airbag suspension in the back. So if he's driving and he's got a little compressor a generator on the back for any work he's going to be doing and it's a little bit of a load he can actually uh, air up the airbags and make sure that he keeps it nice and level so pretty cool ride um, we'll let you look inside a little bit and uh, take a quick peek we'll also look under the hood but most importantly we got to go drive this thing uh, we're about ready to ship this thing out and I want to take you for a ride and let you know what it's like to drive a big boy truck like this with a coyote uh, take a quick peek inside now what you're seeing in here is pretty much an all original interior, but this truck wasn't actually a factory AC truck. So we actually added the vents. And then this right here is a walnut burl wood um, aftermarket. But if you take a look, we've actually designed these door panels and we put the walnut burl in here. So we wanted to tie all this in. So everything kind of looked factory. We did upgrade these. Now original door panel would have stopped right here and this would have been painted down here. But on a crew cab, they got door panels too, which you can't buy. And so their door panels from the factory went all the way down. And so in order to actually tie everything in the same, have it look the same, we actually made these door panels a little bit lower here. So uh, something that we made here in our shop, we do our, all of our own upholstery. We're always striving to get that a little bit nicer, a little better quality look in all the builds that we do. Bench seats, very traditional for the crew cab. Uh, new carpeting, all Restomod AC, retro sound radio, and at the end of the day, you got your Dakota digital gauges. We did kind of a wood steering wheel to kind of tie into this wood right here, but again, tried to keep it very simple. We'll take a look under the dash, or take a look under the hood, and you can take a look. You can look under the dash if you want. All the wiring that's under there, it's perfect. Looks good. I don't even remember how to open this. I know, there's, there it is. All right, so this is a 5.0 Coyote. It's actually a Gen 2 Coyote, so 2015 to 2017. And this is our radiator, which we use in these, which helps keep it nice and cool off. I've had this out as 105 degrees. I had it sitting and idling for 30 minutes, jumped in the truck. Uh, AC was blowing the whole time and it was 190 degrees, so it was perfect. Um, uh, this really keeps things nice and cool. We've got a Willwood uh, Hydro Boost setup. Works pretty well. As you know, you've got lots of extra plumbing and stuff you have to do. Um, these can be a little bit tricky, you know, getting all this stuff in here, but uh, we wanted to keep this as simple and straightforward as we could. So you'll notice that on a, a Coyote, the Mustang, that harness 
out of a Mustang, it actually comes out right here and then, and then we'll plug into the computer. And so we've actually designed a little computer box right here to plug this in. Um, at the end of the day, you could cut this back open and stretch the wires out and tuck it underneath the dash or underneath the seat. But for here, we want to keep it pretty traditional and straightforward. We've got our cold air intake, which we've built. Uh, got our MAF sensor in right here. And when you're putting and building a, a fuel injected system, you definitely want to keep that as, you know, at least a foot away if you can in the straight part of the pipe so that it's going to be metering the air precisely. We've got a new Ford power steering box in here, the aftermarket power steering box. Honestly, we've tried those, whether it's Napa or O'Reilly's or AutoZone, whatever it is, just get the Ford Motor Company power steering box and have that rebuilt. It ends up being the best. So you also have the hydro boost system. And so one thing we had to do on this is when we're running a hydro boost and with power steering and a power steering pump, we actually had to increase that and get that up to about 1500 PSI in order to make the power steering box and the brakes and everything work as good as they do. So uh, trial and error, a lot of times you, you start off, you see if it's gonna work and then you find out maybe it doesn't work as good as you thought. So you're kind of back to the drawing board and, and try to figure out what you need to alter and change. So that's basically hot rodding. Anytime you're building and doing something, there are changes and things you're gonna come across and, and you'll have to uh, modify. Uh, these are the factory little pieces of rubber you can buy. Um, that just basically keeps the air as it's coming in through here. It's not dissipating coming out. It actually stays and goes right through the radiator. Will also help keep your uh, truck cool as well. So, all right, we will get this fired up and we'll, we will take it for a nice little ride and uh, uh, let you just kind of see what it's like. We'll talk about some of the features inside and we'll get going. Fire this up. Turn the AC down. So with the uh, 7379, you have the option of knobs from uh, Restomod Air, or you can actually get the factory controls. And we did knobs on this one just to kind of match these here. You can't get the slider knobs, um, but they basically do the same thing. Um, that more vintage look, but um, they actually didn't have those available with the system. So um, went with this. But we got uh, this retro sound radio. You can actually connect that to your your phone, let's see if we can get that to work. We're ready to go, so let's hit it. So with the air conditioning, the retro, or the rest of my air system actually pretty good. I don't know how it is in the back, but because you're just running the air conditioning here, but it blows out pretty hard and I drove it today at 105 degree temperature and it felt pretty good. So another thing we do is we like to use the Flaming River steering column over some of the competitors and that's just because this little section right here is a little bit shorter and so it lets us kind of keep the column at a little bit better place. Um, and so we just buy a Flaming River column and we make it work. It works pretty good. With the Dakota Digital gauges, the HDX, you can actually control the lights and use any color light you want. There's thousands of combinations and so you can red lights, blue lights, green lights, change the color of the needle. Um, it provides all the information that you need. And there's some buttons over here you can push and, and change you know, what, uh, uh, what you see on the display too. So. said it gets up and goes for a big truck but at the same time it's got plenty of power for what you're gonna need it for this isn't a hot rod this is actually meant to be a work truck and uh, a parade truck it can really be whatever it is you want but it's gonna get up and go and it's gonna be very reliable I think this motor we actually pulled it out of a wrecked Mustang and it only had I think it only had like 25,000 miles on it when we got uh, when we got this motor 
So with this motor we've got the 6R80 transmission and we are pretty content with that transmission. It's pretty much bulletproof and so we've never really had any issues with it, uh, especially in a stock configuration. I suppose when you start adding uh, you know, superchargers or turbos and whatnot, you may want to beef up that transmission when it breaks because it might. Um, not all transmissions are bulletproof, but the 6R80 seems to be a very solid platform. But honestly, I don't know which more you could want for a truck, a 1978 uh, Ford pickup truck. This obviously was nicer than what you got in 1978 by, by a long ways. First off, you didn't have these nice dome lights that we uh, custom design and build. They actually are super bright. Uh, we've got them on just to provide a little bit of light uh, for the camera, but uh, they work really well for just lighting things up. And in a crew cab, we put two lights. Uh, that way uh, you can see really well. But for the most part, I mean, you can't, you can't really uh, complain too much about this truck. Been super happy with it. Um, the seat foam we got from LKQ, uh, the ones that uh, we got with this truck were non-existent, so we had to find some, and rather than make all the seat foam, we bought some. Probably a little on the spongy side, but uh, it's comfortable, it's soft, and uh, feels pretty good. The e-brake works, we've got um, brake uh, controller here for pulling a trailer. I suspect he may pull a trailer and he's got a little fifth wheel hitch in the back here but nice truck if you look right here you can see that's for the airbags so for the Firestone airbags we've got a nice little uh, control right there we do have an onboard compressor two and a half gallon tank for a little bit of air but uh, he's only got two airbags to control occasionally just to move a little bit it's not like a full air ride where you got four bags making a lot of movement this is going to be just a little bit of movement just to uh, add a little bit of a helper but I mean really cool truck I think for the most part he's gonna be pretty excited about this thing it's gonna be fun to drive around I think uh, a great little marketing tool for his company everyone's gonna see this truck and recognize it and know who it belongs to and probably everybody in Roll Arizona knows him already so when they see it they'll they'll know who this belongs to I don't know how many people in rural Arizona, but I'd have to imagine at least a dozen. Um, I, I should just look that up. I mean, Wikipedia would, would definitely have to tell us uh, how many people live in rural Arizona. Looks like we got some biker guys. I think their radio's louder than ours, just on their motorcycles. Looks like a local Arizona chapter. Some cool bikes, some nice Harleys. Bobber helmets on. Looks like they're not DOT approved, but they live back on the wild side. So the truck actually with the twin I beams and with the Ford power steering box. I mean it's it's pretty tight, but you're always gonna have a little bit of wander with these little things. It's not like a modern power steering rack. The only way to actually improve that would be either a brand new chassis, change everything, or just put new front and rear suspension on your original frame, which obviously isn't always the best solution. So, anyways, we're gonna head back to the shop and kind of finish up our night. It's been a long day. We work uh, five, sometimes six days a week down at the shop, just depending upon what needs to get done. We have usually about 25, 30 projects going on at one time. And so it helps us kind of roll from project to project, especially if we have to wait for parts and things come in and uh, it helps keep everybody busy. But this one's been here, it's been over a little over a year and we didn't work on it real hot and heavy. We had a couple other projects, but um, you know, it's time to be done. So we're excited to wrap this up and get it shipped out of here. Let it rip. All right, we go for one pull in this thing, and we'll see if this thing can trip the gears going from first to second. 
All of our tuning we do remotely. We do with Lund Racing. So if you need tuning on your Coyote, let us know. We can get you set up. And they do a really good job. They, they really just, these guys know what they're doing. All right, we're going to start and see what happens. Here we go. second gear not much but she did just a little bit all right guys we're back at the shop so we've done a few a uh, few nice poles had some fun in this thing very nice truck very comfortable should be fun to drive and so if you guys are working on a project like this definitely send us an email you can email us at info at fatfendergarage.com and you can ask any kind of questions or if you need products or you're interested in stuff a lot of things that we do we design uh, kits uh, that will allow you to install the products we use the exact same way we do like our air conditioning kit for 7379 we have the brackets we've got the adapters and all that stuff to make all that work even the condenser bracket to mount to your um, radiator core support so uh, definitely hit us up a um, lot of fun in these old pickup trucks they do cost a little bit of money to get done but at the end of the day uh, this thing's gonna last a long time and be around for a long time be a lot of fun date night with the wife maybe throw a couple kids in the back maybe make a couple kids in the back if you want but a lot of good time pretty excited to get those some shit back thanks